Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. I am excited. I am back outside of the speakeasy. It's a beautiful day. It is raining and whatnot here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but I'm excited to be outside enjoying my front porch, a little bit of whiskey, and filming a video to put on Whiskey Row. Now, in my last video I did in front of the woods, some of you said that I looked like I was in front of a green screen. I promise you I'm not. This is actually where I filmed last time, was like right over there on the edge of the woods. Now tonight, or today I should say, I'm on the front porch and to prove to you that this isn't a green screen behind me, I'm gonna throw the ball to my dog. Brady, go. Hopefully I threw it in where you can see it. There he is, that's our chocolate lab. If you want to see more of him, go to check out Dog Row, Jamie's dog channel. Uh, but, if, and also, if you uh, want to see more content with me and Jamie drinking whiskey, by all means, please go to Beyond the Row. That is kind of our secondary channel where we just do a lot of blinds together with Jamie and I. We have a lot of fun. But let's dive into the whiskey today because this, I think this might be one of the best wheat whiskeys out there. And it is Journeyman Distillery Corsets, Whips, and Whiskey. Now, this thing... If you've never heard of it, um, this comes from Three Oaks, Michigan. It's bottled, uh, distilled and bottled by Journeyman Distillery up there. It is a 100% wheat whiskey. That is actually really, really hard to just do. Uh, normally with any kind of whiskey, they like to use like, uh, uh, you know, some measure of malted barley or barley at least, because it helps stabilize the, the in and they don't have to use enzymes and stuff. It helps stabilize the mash, but they didn't. They went 100% wheat whiskey on this one. And this thing we're going to talk about here in a second, but I'm, I'm postulating that this is a fantastic wheat whiskey. And it's more than postulating because I've actually had some. And uh, coming in, this comes in at 117 proof. This is this particular one for those that are interested. This is batch 60. Now, uh, it is a little chilly out here today, so that's why I'm wearing my uh, outside jacket. I don't know what's going on. My dog is now just like chilling out there eating grass instead of getting the ball. You're supposed to fetch the ball. That's what dogs do. They, they, you throw the ball and they, they pick it up with their mouth and then they carry it back to you. But he didn't do it. Anyway, so I just wanted to prove this wasn't a green screen behind me, even though, and I think it's an artifact of the camera I'm using. This beautiful, beautiful color. Uh, and I do have to say this stuff is really, really good. I know some of you may not be huge wheat whiskey fans and I, and I get it. Sometimes wheat whiskey tends to have a uh, particularly when it's 100% wheat or very, very high wheat content. It tends to be very, um, very grainy. But this, I don't get that graininess at all. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. There's a hint of a craft distillery in here, but it's very, very mild on the nose. This has a little bit of a cream soda, a little bit of vanilla, a little caramel, very mild though. I'd say it's more of cream soda and vanilla. It's, it's a teeny bit of a cereal grain but it's very, very mild. And, and, and y'all who've been following me for a long time, you know that I tend to not really like cereal grains on my whiskeys, but I'm getting a little bit of it on this one and almost like a little bit of apricot on the nose. It's really, really nice. And I love, I love distilleries where, you know, it's a new and upcoming distillery. And this has a lot of like positive things about it. And evidently it won a 2022 uh, Ascot award uh, with, from Fred Menick's Ascot awards. And Overall, I have to say it's it's really really pretty on the nose, very light. Even though it's 117 proof, you're getting I'm I'm almost getting no proof on the nose. You anyway, let's drink it. That that's not a green screen right there, not a green screen. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. I don't know if I'm gonna leave that in or cut that out during editing. I get a little bit. I uh, that apricot really comes through. Some brown sugars. It's very sippable for 117 proof. It's my first whiskey of the day. Nothing, nothing negative to say. For a craft distillery, for a young distillery, and in theory, I think this is fairly young juice. This is really, really solid. Okay, let me talk to you about exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting a little bit of apricot. There's a little bit of a, there's a tartness at the front when you first sip it. That dies down and it goes into like this nice apricot, like dried apricot, brown sugar, a little, it's got, it's pretty syrupy in the mouth for, with 117 proof, you'd expect it to be a little syrupy. The apricot fades toward the finish. You end up with this really pleasant kind of warming. You start to feel the proof here. You don't get the proof in the mouth. The mouth is not spicy, proof spicy at all, but you do get a little bit of the hug going on in the chest. 
And frankly, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That, that, that just means you know you're enjoying it, right? That is so sippable. That's dangerously sippable for a wheat whiskey. You can tell there, it's not as like sweet as a corn whiskey, you know, as a, as a bourbon. You know, a lot of times you'll get like a, like, like a Weller, for example, right? You get those, the corn and you get the wheat. And the wheat just kind of softens the corn, counterbalances that malted barley, and it's really, really good. This, you don't get that corn sweetness, which really brings to me a lot of that caramel and some of those really, really sweet notes. So it doesn't have that, but you do get that, I, I keep saying apricot, but there's an ever so faint touch of a berryness to it. And it's really unique because you have a little bit of that berry, the apricot, the brown sugars, but you don't have a lot of just, just really kind of a sickly sweet sweetness to it, although it is really sweet. I should have Jamie try this because this is like really, really impressive. Color-wise, it's coming in with like this really, really pretty, um, call it a, a brass, like a tinged brass almost. And then the legs on this thing on the glass are actually pretty darn solid as well. Not amazing legs, but, but decent legs. Not too bad. So overall, I think I would say that this is, uh, uh, I got this here at the local Virginia ABC. Uh, you guys saw me buy it uh, in a recent, in the, in the video where I went into the local ABC store. This was, I, I bought this bottle and I got it there. I want to say it was like 60 bucks. It's not, not too expensive uh, for a craft wheat whiskey that's at 117 proof. That's actually, honestly, I think a pretty fair buy. Definitely, I think worth, the, the price is definitely worth the juice that you're getting. Now I've had some other like wheat whiskeys, right? Like pure wheat whiskeys from like Old Elk. I've had like a six year Old Elk wheat whiskey. Um, there's others, but that's just kind of like to me, like the traditional of what you would think of a wheat whiskey. And that, the Old Elk, I think comes across a lot more crafty cereal grain, a little bit more malty. This one, I do get a teeny bit of a maltiness and there's a little bit of that tart bitter up front. Very mild though. Overall, this is worth all of $60 if you're looking for a good wheat whiskey to sip on. Uh, really impressed with this one. I totally understand why, I don't know if you can see the legs now, the legs are really forming up. I got a little bit of like rain splatter on the glass from, from having the glass on the railing and it's cold now my, now it's fogging up. But it's got some, got some long legs, but they're, they're skinny, which isn't a bad thing. And uh, overall, definitely worth the, the the juice is worth the squeeze on this one guys this is one i highly recommend uh, i would have to say better than old elk wheat whiskey by quite a bit to be honest and i like old elk wheat whiskey it's fine um it is missing the the, the corn in the mash bill where you kind of get that really kind of sweet thickness so it it's I would say it's a little thin for a 117 proof bourbon, but since it's not a bourbon, it's a little bit different. Now, I don't know if you can see, but down there in the grass, right about there is a bowl of corn. It's actually just, you know, feed corn. Uh, we put it out for the deer because we like to have the deer come in the yard. It's, it's kind of fun to see the deer. I have a whole herd that comes through. And it's really fun to watch the, uh, the dog staring through the window at the herded deer. <laughs> it's a good time. But that's part of the nice part about, uh, one of the nice things about living out in the country a little bit. This is delicious, fantastic. Two thumbs up, um, value-wise. So two thumbs up on taste. Value-wise, it's really up there. I would highly, highly recommend you try to get a hold of one of these. So the reason they call it corsets, whips, and whiskeys is it's actually made in a, uh, a distillery that used to, I believe the story goes, is that um, it's made in a factory that used to make uh, corsets and whips, which is kind of cool. Because when you think about the name, corsets, whips, and whiskey, that's a very unique and interesting name. Journeyman Distillery is located in the 1800s corset and buggy whip factory in Three Oaks, Michigan. I love uh, old, old, old buildings. So I bet you it is a very cool old building there. So leave a comment below if you've had it, what your thoughts on this are. Uh, I'm a big fan, $60. I think the value's there all day. Flavors there all day, noses there all day. Very, very good. Um, you know, it's not as, you know, it's, it's a different experience from like uh, Old Forester 1920, for example, which is also 55, 60 bucks. So uh, 
It's a different experience, but at the same time, it's very, very, very good. Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. If you ended up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. If you like me outside of the speakeasy, out in the yard, out and about in the world, smash that like button as well. Let me know that this is something you want me to keep doing. But until next time, find a bottle you love.